Okay, so we have talked what is uh, programming language, what is programming. So, but why did we choose Python? Well, uh, the reason is it is one of right now the most popular programming language. So if either you're working in data science, uh, big data, machine learning, etc. So Python has been ranked the number one programming language for multiple years. And there, so it is just one of the programming language and it is similar like Java, C, C++, R, etc. However, it is easy to learn. So it's very easy um, to learn, especially for beginners. Um, it's relatively simple. And it is a, a very efficient language, so may not be as efficient as C or C++. Uh, but relatively speaking, it's, it's still a very efficient language. Uh, it has a lot of uh, libraries and also resources. So when you are using Python, you don't need to write everything by yourself. So there are a lot of available resources are available in Python so that, can, that you can use the other um, Python package that are written by other people and you can use that one directly. And it has been widely used in big data and also machine learning. So it's a great uh, choice that if you want to learn data science, data analytics. And uh, it has also a very great community so that when you have questions, you can always find out uh, people that they, they are willing to help. All right. Uh, so let's talk about some basic concepts in Python. So. Um, Python need an interpreter. So when you have the Python code, you need an interpreter that can read and also execute your Python code. Okay, so Python code interpreter is a computer program that uh, you need um, to execute your Python code. So when you write Python code and you just give that to interpreter and also interpreter will execute the code and also give you the result. Okay, so for example, in your Python code, you see one plus one plus one. Interpreter will return the result that is two. Okay, so right now there are two big versions: Python two point and also Python three point. So for example, two point seven is the most popular one in a two x version, and three point six and also three point seven are right now right now are the most popular ones in 3x version okay so there are slightly different syntax or grammars uh, for example in Python 2.x when you see print and you don't need those parentheses however in Python point three version you do need uh, this parentheses if you want to print something use this print statement okay so just let you know that there are slightly two different versions of the interpreters. Nowadays, three point version is the most popular ones. So more and more people are using three point X versions. So uh, probably in a few years, so no one will use two point X version at all. Okay, so just let you know that there's still people are using two point X versions. Another tool is called the code editor. So code editor is something that can help you to design the Python code. So uh, theoretically, you can use a notebook to start to write your Python code. However, so notebook will just, will just treat your Python code as a plain text. And the Python code editor can help you to highlight, to highlight the sections that you write so that will make it easier uh, to understand your code in structures. structures. So when you install a Python editor, the default uh, editor is uh, when you install interpreter, sorry, when you install Python interpreter, uh, you will have a default editor being installed as well. So that is idle. Okay. Or you can also run that in the Python shell. And in this class, the editor we are going to use is called Cloud9. Okay, 
So the Cloud9 is a browser-based Python ad code editor. So what you need to do is just you need to use your browser and open your browser, and also you can start uh, coding. OK, so that's a very easy, convenient way. Uh, later this semester, we will also use another uh, code editor, which is called GP Notebook. OK, so that is also another browser based uh, Python code editor. So that has been widely used uh, in the data science. OK, so both Python editors are hosted on AWS, so Amazon Web Server. And why do we need AWS? So AWS is a Amazon um, is a collection of the remote computing services. So we can use that one for uh, data storage, uh, computing, networking, database, etc. So AWS is a is a cloud computing platform, and ha cloud computing has been become extremely popular nowadays. So the reason behind that is because you don't need to maintain those infrastructure in your local environment. So for example, in our class, we are going to use a Cloud9. OK, so Cloud9 is on the AWS. So the server is hosted on AWS. So what you need is just a browser that you can open, you can access the Cloud9 that is hosted on AWS. So on your local computer, you don't need to install those Python libraries, etc. So it's very easy for you and easy for us. And you can access it anywhere. So either uh, from home or on campus. So as long as you have internet access, you will be able to use those cloud computing resources. Um, we know that there are huge demand for cloud skills. So you know that for actually Right now, it's for seven years in a row. Cloud computing has become the number one linking skills. OK. Um, and uh, AWS Educator is the in global initiative that provided by Amazon Web Server that help us to use AWS uh, resources for free. We know that in last year, so AWS Educate collaborated with Virginia to provide cloud degrees to help force the workforce demand. We know there is going to be a, a second headquarter of Amazon in Virginia. So there will be huge job demands uh, required cloud uh, computing skills. And also, also last year that George Mason and also North Virginia Community College, so they provide the first bachelor degrees for cloud computing with AWS Educator. All right. Um, so again, so Cloud9 is the cloud-based integrated developed environment idle. So let that allow you to write, run, and also debug in your code with just a browser. OK, so it has a code editor. It has a debugger for debugging purposes. Uh, it also has a terminal. So terminal will allow us to control the instance, to control the Cloud9, so that we can install the Python libraries, etc. So we will use Cloud9 during this lab. So our first lab is to set up our Cloud9 environment. We will also use GitHub. So GitHub is um, the world, the largest community of the developers that to discover, share, and also um, to build a better software. So you may, may not hear GitHub, but on GitHub, you can host your code, share your code. You can version control, and also you can do the team management. So in our class, we will create a GitHub repository that you are going to share your code uh, on GitHub. So basically, you will edit your code on in Cloud9 and also you'll share your code on GitHub. OK, uh, so, your, so by doing that, your code will be public so that either uh, I will be able to read your code and also anyone else will be able to see what you're doing. OK, so and also you can 
uh, do the version control so that you can download code to the different Python editors. Okay, and also you can upload your code to GitHub. Another reason we are using GitHub is that we want, I want you to create your portfolio on, on GitHub. So after uh, finishing this class, uh, so you will have your repository on GitHub. Okay, so like you will have an I-241, so that is the portfolio. So that listed, that will list all the Python code you created and, so, and also including your final project. And after this class, so when you're going to looking for intern and also when you're going to looking for a job, so you can include in that URL of your portfolio. Again, that is public. So you can share this one with your uh, employers and also anyone of the companies that you're interested to demonstrate your, your programming skills. Okay, so, so you just start to build your portfolio. So starting from this class, the digital portfolio. And finally, so we will also use Slack so that as a communication tools. So Slack will bring all our communications together. So in Slack, we have multiple channels so that we have announcement. Uh, we have the general question channel and we have online participant channel. So uh, those are divided by team, project, client, etc. that are relevant to our organizations. So we we are drawing all those channels, and so that we hopefully we no longer need emails, so that everything will be organized and also communicate uh, via Slack. And we can also create multiple threads so that we can keep the conversations, uh, conversions to be clear, so that related to the topic, uh, to our class, 